Welcome back, everybody, to the Pop Culture Field Manual Podcast. I am happy to be back with you. I'm Israel, as always, with Cam. And today, we got a very special episode. We recently did an episode, if you heard it, on insurgencies in pop culture or portrayals of insurgency in pop culture. But this week, we're going to do a little bit of a deeper dive with a man who spent a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, actually, hunting for insurgents in Iraq, Jack Treadway. He's got a new book out insurgent hunter uh that you can check out wherever you read or listen to books actually i don't know if we have an audiobook uh just yet at the time of this recording but jack I think there is there is oh there is okay good all right Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. that's good news for you cameron right yeah i'm all over it man <laughs> <laughs> yeah but jack welcome to the podcast thank you good morning good morning good morning and uh, well jack you know your your bio is extremely impressive you know coming from individuals izzy and i with military backgrounds you know you right. are what we call a, a cut above um the you know the rest of us so i just wanted to kind of hear from the man himself kind of about your background what uh you know what inspired you to join um where did you what units did you go to uh yeah the, the floor is yours my dear appreciate it uh first i wouldn't uh i wouldn't say cut above guys i know what you guys went through and what you guys <laughs> You know, uh, got buddies um, from seventh group. Um, right. I had a few beers with some uh, Ranger Bat guys. So, yeah, uh, nice. not a few not a cut means up. like eight, right? If you're drinking with Ranger Bat guys, right? But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, um, they were buying that night, so I wasn't complaining. Of course, of course, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, so um, uh, myself, um, originally right out of high school, I was wanting to. Um, to be a ranger and go SF. Um, I actually went to MEPS and uh, had the whole thing started with uh, with the Army, and I was all about it. I got in trouble a little bit um, my junior year, and my father at the time was a single parent, and he was like, look, he said, uh, I don't care what you do, but when you graduate high school, your dinner plate's broken. So that pretty, <laughs> I was on my own. He said, you, you might want to pick a branch. So... I went down, started the process, and I uh, came back home, proud to tell him. And he said, hey, boy, don't you know the baddest men that walk the face of the earth are uh, UDT SEALs? I'm like, what the hell is that? <laughs> so the reason why he he was he, uh, felt so strongly is because he was a submariner, and he mm, uh, okay. do lock-in lockouts with him. Uh... So I was like, all right, if the old man's impressed, I'll go check this out. So... I saw that they were uh, stationed primarily at the beach, man, Coronado in uh, Virginia Beach. So I'm like, that's for me, especially if I can stay in California. I'm all yeah. about that. And then back then, you know, there wasn't any internet. There wasn't much literature on oh, yeah. it. So um, I had to scrap to find stuff. I mean, I went to like, you know, the city public library and found an old uh world war ii picture of frogmen locking out and i'm and that's all you have i to get got. The, the microfiche get the yeah, microfiche right, right. <laughs> yeah so um went down and talked to the recruiter and then he gave me a uh about a five page pamphlet and he said the attrition rate was about 80 percent. and i was like all right what am i getting myself into here so um the more I read about it and some of the stuff I thought I could accomplish. So I went ahead and switched over and, uh, I didn't want to tell any of my friends about it. Cause if I bombed out, you know how that goes, right? Yeah, sure. 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 <laughs> yeah, That'd be a laughing stock. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's what I did, man. I was uh, two weeks out of high school when I wasn't even shaving yet. And, uh, I was in basic training and, uh, uh, back then they didn't have, they got a pretty complicated pipeline now, which I think is for the better, yeah. better products. And, Mm -hmm. um, better prepared, uh, candidates, but they just showed up and said, Hey man, this is our video. Who wants to do it? So <laughs> I already knew I wanted to do it before I got there. And I was kind of getting out of shape when I showed up to, to get to basic. We were a yeah. few weeks into it. So all these guys thought it was cool. And all of a sudden everybody wanted to do it. I was like, Holy shit. And they threw us all in the pool. And that, during the swim test, man, everybody's in my way. 
<laughs> I'm like, you idiots, man. I'm trying to do this for the rest of my life and you guys are in the way. So it was yeah. like, it was like a soup in there. <laughs> so got through it. They got us into the locker room and they sat down and that, that's when they went over everybody's ASVAB scores. And after they went through the ASVAB scores in the swim, there was two of us still sitting there. Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then, uh, and me and, and me and the other guy were the smallest guys out of the whole group. So we went from there. You had to go do, you know, same as your guys kind of assessments. We had to do pull-ups, push-ups and uh, sit-ups next. We did the push-ups and sit-ups and um, then we did the pull-ups and the other guy couldn't get the pull-ups. Mm. And, I, and I got the pull-ups and I remember the, uh, the frog man that was testing us. I mean, he was your typical uh, about six two, probably about 220. The guy they send to tat, represent the team. Yeah. Tat, <laughs> tat, <laughs> looking guy. Yeah. yeah. The gold Yosemite Sam mustache. And I was like, exactly. oh, crap, that's, I guess that's what I'm, you know, attaining to be tatted out. And uh, after the pull-ups, it was just me left. So we went out there and you do it with a uh, steel toe boondockers and the old dunk jams that you had to wear those denim jean bell bottoms. Yeah. And a t-shirt. So went out there and did the run and um, that was it, man. I had my orders to go to buds. Wow. Yeah. So they made you do the assessment for buds in basic training. Correct. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. like the opposite of my experience. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I remember they just, uh, the ranger recruiters walked in and I was the same story as you. I enlisted with the contract and I knew I was going in and that's what I was doing. And, uh, yeah, the Rangers just walked in with their awesome tambourines on and they were also behemoths of men. Right. And, uh, right. yeah, and they were just like, who has, who can do this stuff? And also is this smart? And yeah, then, then they took us all and let us figure it out. <laughs> right. Mean, yeah. yeah. For my, for my basic training class, I was, uh, like there was like 50 of us and only two managed to get to the actual unit, which was wow. myself and my buddy Co. Cool. Um, yeah. But that's, yeah, dude, I completely, yeah what you're saying absolutely yeah, yeah. And, you know jack you talk about the the training pipeline have if you've kept up with any of it do you said it's evolved since then you said it's gotten better would you say in terms of like how they get guys in there and the and the kind of the training pipeline they have yeah they um it's they turned it into almost like a mission now um mm -hmm. i work with some uh guys that do some outreach they have something called a um a seal swick scout team mm -hmm. And um, what the guys do is they, they, they go to different areas, they go to colleges, they go to high schools and um, you know, they, they promote it and they show the guys what they do. And um, uh, from there, once they recruit them, um, some guys that might be close to the local areas, they'll pull them in and train them on swimming and PT and stuff like that. Wow. And then um, I was just talking to a, a chief the other day and he was out on the West coast where they run like a mini hell week for some uh, future officers. Yeah. And then I guess when they go to basic now, I don't know if they're still doing it, but they have like a separate uh, uh, pipeline within basic or, or right after basic where they keep the guys that are going um, EOD or uh, rescue swimmer or um, or uh, SWIC or the teams and they, and, they, and they work them out there before they actually get their orders to buds. Yeah, no, I've heard about that too. It's 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 crazy to hear the differences between you know back in the day and then today. There's a lot of emphasis on like because obviously this is it's an amazing job, right? Yeah. So yeah. like, and it's hard to get there. So they want to make sure that they're creating a product, which I think is great. But then again, you know, different personality types nowadays. But we're not talking about that. This is right. <laughs> this isn't right. this isn't a tangent. We're talking about your book, and obviously yeah. your book's titled "Insurgency Hunter." Insurgent Hunter, and right. you talk about how what you just said. You know your your journey to buds, and then how you became an Air Force OSI agent, and mm -hmm. uh, you know we're all over Iraq and the Middle East. So can you kind of talk about that transition? You know, yeah. obviously. We, you went SEALs because they were the best of the best, and you had a lot of influence from your old man, uh, which is extremely respectable, right? Got to make the old man proud first and foremost. Right, um, right. But uh, what kind of triggered that switch? Was it an event in the SEALs that made you go and want to commission? Were you over the enlisted life? Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, no. So um, I, I think I did it more for uh, uh, health and family reasons than sure. I did for what my heart wanted to do, you know, uh, mm. 
even the teams is like breaking up with the hottest girl you've ever dated. You know what I mean? It was tough. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, and, and, and not just because of the job, but because of the camaraderie. I mean, the stuff you do, sure. guys, you guys know it, you know, when you, yep. when you working with guys that have experienced the same things you have and they can perform the same level as you, it's, it's just a whole different type of camaraderie, you know? Yeah. You miss uh, the clowns, not the circus. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, um, I really, you know, I really enjoyed my experience in the teams, but, um, I had, uh, broken my back and then I had my uh, left knee reconstructed and, um, I just wasn't the same, um, yeah. after that. And then the other thing too, is, you know, you'd get off work, um, in the teams and, you know, I would stuck around, I either PT or I would go shoot or something to make myself better and faster. You know, I'm always competing with somebody that was in my platoon mm. that might be a bit better. And I wanted to pass him. And that was my life. And if I wasn't doing that, I was out with the boys, you know, spending my paycheck on rounds. Exactly. But, uh, you know, when you, um, you start a family and then, uh, you know, um, when I, when I got hurt, I got sent to buzz as an instructor to heal up. And, um, my wife, you know, we, we, we had a second kid while I was at buds and, uh, I don't know for what reason, but I was grocery shopping with her one day. And uh, I think I was at E6 at the time. And I was like, yeah, you know, big chested frog, man, you know, you're proud. And then, um, she's pulling this stuff out for, for wick, you know, free milk or a uh, deductive price, uh, uh, dairy products and stuff. And I'm yeah. like, what the hell is that? And she's like, well, this is what it is. I'm like, we don't need to do that. Do you? She's like, Oh yeah, we do. I'm like, what the hell? So I'm in line and I feel kind of small, you know? And I'm like, Jesus, I thought I was doing pretty good. Mm. So, um, at the time when I was at buds as an instructor, uh, I was the, um, like the second senior enlisted guy in die phase. They call it an LPO, a leading petty officer. Mm -hmm. Um, it's kind of like the, the frontline supervisor, you know, I but you, you know, yeah. it's not a tough, it's not a tough job because the guys are just so squared away and they're on it, but everybody was, um, there for, for, uh, uh, either injured or they were tra thinking about transitioning to get out. So, um, but still with a right mindset, like, Hey, you know, these guys that I'm training are going to be standing with my buddies that I just left not too long yeah. ago. So make mm -hmm. sure we turn out the best product possible. But anyways, so everybody, except for one guy, um, and all the die face, we had about 20 guys in there, including, a a couple uh controllers and a couple um uh, special forces guys mm. uh, uh, actually we have three special forces guys we got a corpsman who i'm still friends with today a uh, seventh group guy um and then we had another seventh group guy i'm still buddies with him he he fought he, we went to the air force together you know ah, okay yeah and then we had an, uh, um a couple different uh um green Beret officers that rotated out all good dudes, great experience. Um, but anyways, uh, we were all going to college at nights. And since I made the schedule, I had guys put what nights they had college and it worked out almost evenly where we can color the night dives, you know, for each other. Um, so everybody was knocking out their degrees. We had guys leaving to different agencies. We had guys join police departments, you know, anything tactical that they could put their sure. team guys. In. Yeah. We had um, um, FBI, uh, HRT guys coming through that we were training. Um, you know, we had guys interested in that as a good group of guys, bunch of former, uh, military guys. Oh yeah. It seems like, like all of HRT is military. <laughs> yeah. They were pretty cool. They were all salt and peppered hair and say at the time, yeah. they were nice. still, uh, uh, they were still getting after it. Um, but that was a good experience. And so I was thinking, okay, I'm getting my degree. I'm not quite what I was used to be, but I still love this type of work. Um, and I, I got to make some more money. You know, it wasn't about me anymore. Yeah. So I, I put in an application with the DEA and I put in an application and I, I came in the door one day and um, one of the Air Force guys was putting in a, a package and he's like, hey, man, just copy mine. We've got the same training. So basically, that's what I did. <laughs> me, and, me and the Green Beret, we, we, we copied his package and we all got picked up. You know, nice. yeah, must have been a smart lad, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we got picked up so quick. It was like, uh, uh Oh, now what do we do? 
are we really going to do this? You know? So, uh, we made the transition and that was prior to, to nine 11. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So had nine 11, uh, happened, I think while we were all still there, we would have never even batted an eye, you know? Mm. Um, what was it like? Uh, what was the, uh, what was the training or air force office OSI? What was that like? Yeah. I, I have to admit, I've never heard of this MOS before. Yeah. I, before I, I, we started decided to do the interview. Yeah. So, um, I had neither at the time. Um, the only OSI age you never heard of was a $6 million man. I don't know if you guys are old enough to remember that. Oh my show. God. He was an OSI guy. Yeah. He That's was an so OSI. Funny. See, I'm not old enough to remember that. So I'll let Izzy take the reins. On yeah, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. But uh, there was a, a, a warrant officer, a pretty good dude. His locker was next to mine. We were instructors at Bud's. And uh, he was talking to me about work he had done with OSI as a team guy. So I looked into it. And basically, you're a um, – you're a you're a cadet credentialed, uh, what they call an 1811 federal agent. Hmm. Um, and, um, your, your job is to investigate, uh, uh, you know, death investigations, rapes, um, espionage, uh, counter Intel. And, um, they, they, they did some tactical work and I was, I was all about that. So, uh, you know, I had an application with the DEA, everything came back good with that. Everything came back good with OSI. So, uh, uh, OSI route, you go to, uh, the federal law enforcement training center in Glencoe, Georgia. Hmm. It's like a huge, people ask me about it, you know, cause they, some people have a rough time there. And when I was asked, every time I was asked about it, I was like, man, that place was great. They're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, are you kidding? I said, all you do is you go there, you take classes about basically the fourth amendment, the, the search and seizure. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and you fight, you shoot, and you drive cars fast all day. And you that PT. Sounds awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, are you kidding? I love that. I love, you know? So, um, yeah, it was a, a great school year there with all the uh, alphabet soups except for uh, DEA, FBI, and uh, um, everybody else is training there. All the other agencies, uh, ATF, yeah. Marshals, NCIS. There's actually uh, team guys doing some of the training down there. Okay, right yeah. on. That yeah, must be yeah. a pretty cool assignment there. Nice little vacation. Yeah, yeah, it was. You, you live right there for six months on the campus. Wow. I just rode a mountain bike to class every day. It was awesome. Let's nice, uh, let's transition. To, I want to talk about your time in Iraq because that's uh, obviously a big part of the book. And then uh, I was over there. Cameron and I both have deployments. I was in Iraq in 2008, and then Cameron was in Syria in 2014? 17. 17. I was, I was like, wow, I joined the Army in 14. <laughs> okay. I knew one of those numbers <laughs> was significant. Yeah. Uh, wow. But uh, tell us about that. Tell us about how going over there, what, what that was like. Yeah. So um, uh, prior, prior to getting over there, you know, the, the primary reason I wanted to go an OSI um, was because I knew about their downrange, uh, their, their downrange mission. There's stuff that they did overseas for uh, counterintelligence that I was really interested in. Mm. Um, when I got there, um, well, before before I got to go, they they put me in narcotics for a while. Interesting. You hmm. Had to learn how to run. You had confidential informants. So I was cruising around in my Harley with a flannel and a beard and hair growing out and. I had snitches buying ecstasy for me, you know. Yeah, there you go. It's like Matthew McConaughey and uh, True Detective. <laughs> <laughs> I got hopefully I, not that I, bad. I, not that bad. I just saw the first episode of that this weekend, so I don't <laughs> know that yet. It's heavy duty. So, anyways, uh, you you got to learn how to, um, you know, work work informants, you know, and um, uh, you know, test them and, and and vet them and all that stuff before you you put them to work. And, um, my bosses in the States knew that's what I wanted to do. So that's what they had me do before they sent me. Um, so when I got there, that was our mission. When you, when you got on the ground, uh, primarily you're, uh, you're trying to protect everybody on that base. You know, when Balad was a, a, a joint base, a lot of army air force, um, Marine contingent would come through from time to time. Funniest thing. I saw this young kid 
with a, a 50 cal sniper rifle going to the movie theater there with us <laughs> he took his rifle in the theater i'm like you don't see that every day any cool. different time control right. of your weapon yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. so but you get there and um we were like a a 10 man team um we had a our uh, we had a commander we had a senior nco uh, we had an analyst we had uh, uh, interpreters, and then we would have um, um, eight collectors, agents, um, that worked out of the bullpen. That's what we called it. And our job was to uh, basically put target packages together for, for, uh, for you know, units like you guys to take action. Yeah. I mean, you got a little bit of experience for building target packages while you're in the SEAL teams, right? Because I have a couple of SEAL buddies, and that's all they talk about is like building target packages when they're overseas to hit. Yeah. So the cool thing about that was is um, I had no experience with that within the team. Sometimes the um, the information or the intel they would bring us, I'm like, where the hell's this come from? You know? <laughs> yeah. So um, it was it was a perfect transition because um, when you're putting a target package together, you know you. Just, you know, little things like where's the guy squirt to, um, what's the house made out of, how many levels, uh, are there guards, are there dogs, uh, where's the LZ at, mm-hmm. if, if you want to go that route. Um, if you're going to go in by a uh, uh, convoy or Humvee, you know, IEDs, you know, you want to know all that shit. Yeah. Uh, um, so uh, um, that, that's, that's what we put together, and I, I remember getting a phone call. Um, from one time from, uh, some, some green berets, I think out of Baghdad, they call, uh, uh, Charlie company. I've heard, I've heard of, uh, Charlie company before. Um, and then, and another time, uh, um, or it's with, uh, 10th group, but both those guys are like, Hey, they would call me like, Hey, who the hell are you? I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, did you put this target package together? I was like, yeah. They're like, what's your background, man? Cause this is, this is stuff we need. And I'm, so I told them. And, and it was interesting because uh, uh, the tenth group guys actually knew guys I knew back at Team Five. That's mm. all. <laughs> so, so there was a lot of trust right away. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and the cool thing was is uh, I'd say more times than not, you know, they look at you and you give them the intel and you give them the package and they look at you like, you coming with us? Uh, shit, check yeah, and I bring my turp, and that's what they want to hear. You yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. So. Um, so yeah, um, those were those were two different missions. Um, the one with uh, the uh, tenth group guys, uh, we were going after this guy that um, they'd been trying to get before I got there. So I, and he happened to be. We divided me and the agents. We divided uh, the area of operations around the base into sectors. Mm-hmm. So if you mortared, or rocketed, or someone got ambushed or hit an IED in that sector, it was those agents' responsibility. Yeah. So that's how we divide it up. And that's how you took accountability instead of just writing a da- bunch of damn intel reports and actually having something actionable, making a difference on the battle space. Mm. So guys took a lot of pride in that. And gals, we had um, female agents as well. Took a lot, a lot of pride in it, running your sources and stuff. Um, so the guy that I wanted to get after these, uh, uh, um, these SF guys were, uh, they were out of a fob. And I didn't even know that they were out there but I was working with a first cav um, operations officer and he's like, Hey, if you want to really get this guy, these are probably the guys you want to talk to to get after him. So we sent him my package. And the next thing you know, um, I'm up there with these guys and um, the guy that we were going after, man, we called him Kaiser Soze because he, every time we go to catch him, he was gone. <laughs> you know, you'd find a, a hot soup bowl or a, or a cigarette still lit and he was gone, you know? And, um, so, uh, I think the first time we were going to get him, um, I had an informant near his village and I had one outside of his village. And these guys didn't know that I was working with both of them because that's the way you wanted to do it. So you could validate your, your intel. Um, these guys decided like, yeah, yeah, we, we're, we're going to go in. We had an LZ here to, uh, use some, uh, sixties to go in, um, and we knew where the guy squirted to. Um, the first time, the first day of the mission was going to go down. I got a fo- I got intel saying that there was uh, one of the bugger eaters got killed there, so they were having a funeral. 
And I'm like, well, that's going to be ugly because that's going to bring about 300 book readers to the funeral. And <laughs> that's no good. So about the time I'm going to call uh, the major of the A team, the phone rings and it's him. And he's like, hey, man, are, are you hearing this? I'm like, uh, yeah, I am. He's like, yeah, we don't do funerals anymore. <laughs> I said, check, you know, another day. Oh, yeah. So we still ran, ran the guy, had a pattern of life watching for him. Where I wanted to get him was he, there was this bridge that he went to every Friday at noon. He, and he had, he had to go over the bridge to go to his church. He went to church every Friday at noon. And he always had a bodyguard with him. Mm. And that's where I wanted to get him was on that bridge. Yeah. I was like, damn it. If I was back in the teams and I could take my sniper buddy out with me and a couple other guys for security, we could just take care of business right there. But um, it was a um, kill or capture. Yeah. <laughs> well, that wasn't going to happen, right? Yeah, it's right? pretty, you know, it's like a 90-10 on that yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. So um, um, before before uh, putting that package together and completing it, I actually uh, also got introduced to a JTAC, hmm. Joint Tactical Air Controller, uh, TAC-Ps, I guess, yeah. Air Force. Those guys are awesome. And he was an yeah. awesome. Yeah, I couldn't believe the ability he had. So what happened was, is we had we had like a dozen predators on the base. Well, I never, you know, I I saw him used a few times, you know, with the Hellfire rockets, which was pretty cool. Sure. But this guy was sitting there, and he would control them for a couple hours before they landed. So they sat me with him, and all that recon that you would do, you know, on an RNS team, you know, that would take you about three days. We did it in about an hour. Wow. Holy shit! Are you kidding me? We're watching it like on video, taking pictures and coordinates and everything else, building this package. Um, so um, we got that to the guys, and um, we said, "Okay, this day we're going." Um, um, th this was a tough call for me because uh, we had uh, the third ID. We convoyed up with them. So we cleared our building of all our agents, took everybody. We had uh, three Humvees that fell into their convoy. And um, we went all the way up to the FOB that the uh, Special Forces team was at. And uh, everybody stays outside. And then they also picked up a bunch of Iraqi soldiers, but didn't tell them where we were going or what we were doing because you just, you didn't know who was who. Right, right. So I go inside, man, and um, it was kind of intimidating. There was the whole, the whole A team was sitting at a table. Like it was a staff meeting. Yeah. I walk in with my Terp and my other agent and, um, they've got, uh, they've got some kind of a drone up. We've got a predator up. I got my, I got two snitches on the ground. We got comms with one of them. So everything's looking good. We've got Blackhawks are supposed to come down from a base called Spiker. They're supposed to pick us up and take us over there. And I guess the third ID guys were going to be the blocking force, and we were going in um, to the to the LZ to get this guy. And guess what? It was Friday, right before church, right? You know? <laughs> and so it's planets uh, are aligning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So so like this is awesome, you know. And then um, all of a sudden we can't we don't have contact with my with my informant anymore. He's gone. And then the helicopters are held up from a sandstorm come out of spiker to pick us up on time so i'm like fuck and then um the next thing is um i get a call from the jtac saying hey man uh about three cars just pulled up and a bunch of dudes with AK ak's got out and some people came out of the house and got in and they left and i'm like well crap did you follow them like yeah we kind of um they followed it was a few miles away that they went to but i know nothing about that spot so, um, I'm looking at the major, uh, the, the, the eight, the eight team boss. And he's like, uh, I'm look, he's like, what do you want to do, man? It's your op. I'm like, son of a bitch. Yeah. All the pressure. And, no pressure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking at half of the team is looking at me like, let's go, man. Let's go. <laughs> yep. The other half is like, you know, the, the, the team sergeant's like, don't burn your source, man. You know? So I went back in the, um, I asked him if where his comms were. He took me in this room. They had all kinds of comms, man. I mean, it was like a horseshoe around me. It's like, Jesus, which one do I pick, you know, to talk to my guys back at the base? So I take in all the information. We've even got some uh, signet going yeah. on, right? 
Um, and the phone's there. And I'm like, uh, I, I can't, I can't go and put these guys in harm's way for a damn phone. Yeah. You know? So I walk out and I feel like I'm giving the abort mission on a jump. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. All the boys are ready to go and you're just yeah. like, nope. You do. Yep. Yeah. So, um, I walk in and half the team's just kind of like frustrated. The other half of the team is like good call. And I look at the, um, the 18 boss and he's looking at me. He's got kind of a smile on his face. Like he's kind of relieved, you know, like he's happy. I made that call. But um, I go outside, man, and my team's pissed. They're all ready to go. And I'm like, look, man. Um, and they're talking to our intel sources, too, back, back at the home base. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to risk everybody's lives for something like that, man. I mean, this guy's, guy's a bad dude. No telling me what he's got set up there. So everybody's pissed off at me. Um, and then the next morning, um, they all my intel is confirmed that, yeah, he came and was picked up and, uh, taken away, uh, to another place. He wasn't there. Well, so sound like a good call yeah. in the end there. Um, yeah. Yeah. What a, what a stressful encounter. I mean, you know, from Izzy and Mai's perspective, you know, we're, our perspective is from those guys sitting in the teams, right? Just waiting for the green light, like always mm -hmm. the word, the infamous word, you know, that we're always waiting for. Um, so we have minimal experience on your side, you know, building these target packs is the, the Intel side of it. What was the most challenging thing about it? And, you know, in my experience, it seems like your experience by cutting this down and, you know, picking, picking the, the high road here, you know, not, uh, not sending guys, you know, to their, to their death essentially, yeah. uh, or possibly, um, what's the hardest that, that op seems like it's more of a norm than not, mm -hmm. um, what was the most challenging thing about, you know, trying to get of the Intel side, like getting all these Intel working with, working with snitches, you mm -hmm. know, uh, it seems like there's a lot of moving pieces here. Yeah. Um, the big, the big word in, um, this field is called synergy. You know, you got, got to have communication, um, from the guys that are going to action it all the way to the other types of intelligence that you're um, putting together. Um, uh, hey, just to finish up on that guy, this is how bad that dude was. The Charlie Cup no. are the ones that called me up and said, Hey man, we're going up here to grab this one dude. And we saw your target package and, um, we're, we're going to pass by, we're going to grab that dude on the way back home. I'm like, um, it's not going to be that easy, man. He's like, Oh no, we do this all the time. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> not going to need that. We're not going to be. Yeah. Out there. I'm like, do you need support from us at all? He's like, no, no, we got this. We got this. I'm like, um, uh, all right, man. And, uh, you know, he asked me questions about the target package and who I was and all that stuff, too. And uh, the next morning, um, I'm coming out of the gym and I got two agents rolling up going, hey, man, they, they went after uh, Soze last night. I guess he, they had Junie Scouts and, uh, that went in with them. And I guess one of those guys got shot in the chest, but he got Kevlar on. And then one of the uh, SF operators got his MBG shot off by my guy. No, oh, man. And, um, they, uh, he swore it out into the field that I always told him that he goes out to. And then our base, uh, sent up a couple fighters and dropped two 500 pounders on him. Um, nice. yeah, that's awesome. Three weeks that's later, nice. three weeks later, that son of a bitch still turned up. <laughs> no <laughs> yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is that guy made of freaking Kevlar? I, He's like <laughs> Iron Man. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So Jesus. So yeah, what number? Oh, sorry, buddy. What number packet were you guys on for him? What was it like? What were you calling him? The Kaiser was Kaiser it like Kaiser? Kaiser was it yeah? For... Was it like Kaiser sixteen, Kaiser twenty, <laughs> yeah. Kaiser twenty two? Yeah. So I don't even know what Kaiser Soze means. I just know we titled that from the movie. Uh, was it unusual? The, the usual suspects, yeah. 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 The greatest <laughs> devil ever played on anybody, you know? So yeah, convincing me didn't exist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's gone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I, I had his, I had hands on his, we, you know, I cuffed up his, his, uh, his cousins. I've questioned his, his wives, his kids, and he taught them all how to lie, man. They all said the same thing. Mm. Yeah. That was another thing that, you know, that's, that's an interesting thing with, with my team, like I, because I was the junior guy, I was not privy to a lot of the 
Intel meetups and stuff. Cause we had sources, we had people that were handed off to us mm. from the previous team. Right. And so it's kind of like when you, like when the president first gets in, you have to do like a tour of all the agencies. Like when we first got into country, I was at KROS kind of in the Northern, you know, North of our, North of Baghdad. Uh, and then, so we'd have to do like a tour. We'd have to go around to the Mukhtars. We have to meet all our sources. And it was like a couple of weeks of us getting handed off from the previous team. Like, Hey, we're out of here, but these guys are just like us. This is the next team that's in. You can trust them. Right. And so uh, you had to kind of like, you know, rebuild that rapport and that trust and, yeah. and hopefully have that trust. A lot of these guys, I remember my team started said, yeah, like we're going to, we're going to use these guys, but we don't, it's hard to trust these guys. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like you could trust them as far as you could throw them, uh, mm-hmm. you know? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's something we had to worry about too, is um, agents getting too close to some of our informants. Um, in fact, right before I left, the uh, the senior NCO and the commander were thinking about doing a shakeup and switching sources around on everybody. Mm. Uh, yeah. Just so, just so, just so nobody guys. gets yeah nobody gets too close, nobody gets too comfortable or too familiar. Right, right, yeah. yeah. And some of those guys over there were professional informants, man. I mean, after our guys got killed, um, we had some guys that came over. OSI has this team. I don't know if they still have it, but it was a it was a great resource. They were called. Um, uh, anti-terrorism specialty team. And, uh, hmm. they, they looked a lot like the, uh, HRT guys, man. They were all, uh, probably early to mid thirties. Um, all, all mature guys all had yeah. various backgrounds, but all tactical. Um, and they are actually, that team was started and trained by a, by a former SF guy who, um, came over to OSI. Hmm. That, yeah. I think he was, a. uh, I think he left. I think he left uh, um, special forces as a, a major and went over to OSI. But he started that team up like way before I was in OSI. Um, but those guys came over to uh, backfill, and, and these guys were solid, man. I mean, when we rolled out in the streets in Iraq, it was like they were there just there yesterday on the first op that I went with them. Mm. Um, I remember we were clearing this building. And this, this kid comes across the street, I guess he might have been in his early twenties, and he's yelling one of my um one of our AST guys' names. And he's like, Yeah, man, he's like, I can't talk to you here. You need to get out of here. He's like, uh, my contact information is still the same. But he was one of his informants from a couple of years prior. Oh, yeah. Wow. Small world. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh the other thing you had to worry about too was the Sunnis and Shias playing games against each other. Or, yeah, they're always at war. Yeah, and tribes versus tribes. They're yeah, gonna be stepping on trying to screw land. each other over. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the Middle East was just kind of, in my opinion, a soup sandwich. Going over there, like when I was in Syria, it was like we weren't just fighting one war here. Oh wow, no, it, no. Oh yeah, it was like six wars all happening. Yeah. You talk about, you know, you talk about synergy. That place is. <laughs> that place. Yeah. Is absolute I, synergy of war. Kurds, ISIS, Shia, Assad, yeah. ISIS, the Re- Russians, Re- us. Yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. the Kurds, yeah, all those people. Ethnically speaking, they're all spread out, but border wise, you go over a border, you go, they go from being the good guys to the bad guys. Right. You know, because they're just oh, yeah. now we're in a different country and you know, they're yeah. fighting, they're fighting somebody over here. Well, yeah. there are allies over here. You right. know, that was the poor the Kurds. Kurds. Poor I felt Kurds. so bad for the Kurds. Yeah, no shit, especially what, what Turkey did to them. Oh yeah. yeah. And you're Prices. like, they're fighting, yeah. they're fighting for the SDF and they're like, yeah, you'll get your land if you fight for us. And you just, in the back of your mind, you're looking at him. You're like, dude, it's bad. Yeah. <laughs> you're not getting anything. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know, I want a part of the one, just one thing, just kind of jumping around a little bit. Uh, in the book, you talk about uh, early in your work with OSI, you uh, back here in the States, uh, somebody named Devery Lane Taylor. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So hopefully he's still in prison. Hopefully. I read <laughs> yeah. that. I, I looked that There's up. There's any justice. Bit. Yeah. It's terrible. No, yeah. I want to hear about this. Another reason you can't see my face right now, right? He's <laughs> yeah. in a pseudonym. I mean, there's other guys like him that hopefully are still, well, they're probably out, but Jesus. So, um, you know, when, when, you're, when you're a new agent, you're going to do 
the the typical uh, death investigations and rapes, you know, sexual assaults and stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, I I'm uh, I li- I live on the base at Eglin, so I live close to the hospital. So even though I'm not the agent on call, somebody shows up at the hospital, they call me because I'm right down the street. Yeah. So I got all those. And a lot of times, you know, it, it would be um, a, a lot of our sex assaults for a while there were uh, like somebody got caught messing around on their husband. So all of a sudden it's a sexual assault. And you're just like, oh, man, here we go again. You know, we're putting all these yeah. man hours in. Another Jody in the military. My God. Right. Yeah. So I go down and I walk in and um, it's a it's it's a it's a rape victim that they're telling me. So I'm expecting to see, you know, you know, a disheveled, um, a woman and I walk in and it's a guy about my size, maybe bigger. And I'm like, Holy shit. And he's disheveled and he's upset. I'm like, Oh man. As, as you should be. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So, um, uh, the worst part is, is he's, um, He's he's uh he's not active duty. He's either guard or reserve. I can't remember, but he's also he's also a federal agent. I'm not going to say what agency, you know. But he's he's a he's a he's a gun carrying credential agent. Um, but anyways, um, he'd been uh, drugged and then um, driven someplace. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So it was it was a bad scene all around. I felt really bad. Um, the big thing I had to worry about is this guy, you know, coming back once I found out who it was getting on a plane and coming back with his gun and his badge. Cause he can get on a plane like that and coming back mm. in business himself, you know? So I had, yeah, no, absolutely. I had to really talk to this guy like, Hey man, just, just let me do my job. Okay. I know how you, mm. I can't imagine what you're going through at all, but you know, you got a family. Let's not make it worse. You know, just trust me. Yeah. Um, so after digging in, to this for a little bit. Um, and this was all like no high tech stuff here, man. This was all like gumshoe interviewing. And I mean, I went down to getting a, um, a credit card receipt. Yeah. Like, good old, pl- yeah. old fashioned police work. Yeah. Man. <laughs> getting statements and stuff. Um, and, um, uh, it, it took me about a week and a half and different agents were ro- rotating with me. Cause they're like, ah, oh, you're never going to find this guy. But some of them, you know, they were, they just hung with me just because, um, you know, they're, they're good teammates, you know? Mm. So about a week and a half into it, you know, um, I narrow it down to this place and, um, I, I finally get a name. So I go back and I, I run his name and a picture comes up and the agent with me, he, he was, he was funny as shit to work with anyway. So he was always clowning around and screwing with guys. And, um, he took the picture and he made it a, a, a screensaver on one of our civilian agents computer. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 oh. He did not, he didn't look right. I mean, if you look, if you saw his picture, it, it just didn't look right. Right. <laughs> so he comes back into work and he looks at his screen. He's like, Hey, what's Devry's picture doing on my computer screen? And we're like, Oh, man, you know this guy. <laughs> so oh. come to find out they'd been, no, they weren't. Yeah. He, um, went to school with this guy to an officer school. This, sometimes we send our civilians to these officer schools. Uh-huh. He went to school with this guy. Oh my gosh. So come to find out he's in our jurisdiction. He's not a civilian. He's Ooh. captain in the air force. Oh. Yeah. oh man. Yeah. So we go and we get this guy and, um, I had to work with a local PD cause we wanted to arrest him, um, out in town and we get him in, um, uh, First of all, they didn't think I was going to be able to get a arrest warrant for him. And the judge that signed the arrest warrant, she signed it as fast as she read it. She's like, well, get this guy. And, <laughs> all right. Dude. All right. So we went out, we got the guy, we brought him in. And then, then me and this detective that were going to interview him. Um, you know, back then it was a still don't ask, don't tell type, type thing. So it was a yeah. fine line we had to walk. Um, mm. it was such a fine line that I had two experienced agents and two, uh, 
uh, um, I think a DA and a JAG. And then um, that precinct's lieutenant were all watching the interview on video while we were in the room with this guy. The guy I go in with, you know, OSI agents are pretty professional, pretty professional before they do interviews. They, we have a plan before we go in. Mm-hmm. Kind of dissect the mind of this person we're getting ready to interview and figure out what's the best way. And I, had a, I had a female partner at the time, and we were a great team because guys always wanted to impress her. And I'm like, I would be the bad guy, and then I'd let them tear into me. And then she'd make me look like I, I was the, the stooge, and they'd open up to her. It worked great. <laughs> So um, we had this guy, but I had to do this interview with a uh, one of the police detectives. And this guy was old school, man. I mean, like, I don't know, like the old 70s detective shows. And I was like trying to game plan with him. He's like, yeah, right, whatever. We're just going to go in there, puts his cigarette out. We go and we sit down. I'm like, oh, shit. Okay, here we go. <laughs> the tricky part was we had to read him his rights, um, the Article 31 rights, the military's rights. And he... Mm even the civilian rights, the mem- basically your, 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 um, um, your Miranda, right? Yeah. And what we don't want the guy to do is lawyer up. Hmm, sure. So this guy, I'm going to go out the guy soft and this guy wants to go at him hard right out of the gate. And I'm like, son of a bitch, I'm never going to get this guy to, to agree to, to speak with us. But, um, I was able to land on my feet even after that, you know, got the guy intrigued enough, you know, I kind of like, uh, pumped him up a little bit, you know, about who he was. He was company great officer of the year. <laughs> oh my God. At the hospital that I went and got, yeah. that I went to the, where the, where the victim was. The wow. Thing, he was company great officer of the year. Yeah. So I played, you don't need to, <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry. Terrible joke incoming. At least you don't need to get a, a mug shot for him. Just take his, his sure. picture off the wall there. <laughs> for right. an officer. Of the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so anyways, we, we go through it and, um, basically I tell him we have more evidence than I really do. Of course. And he bites it hook, line and seeker, but I tell him I'm on his side and I try to make it sound, um, first, he, first, first he denies, denies, denies. And then I try to make it sound consensual and he's all in. So, so we got him, you know, um, once I found out after that, I'm like, when, um, I brought in, what was it? Something came up. The, the agents were talking in the hallway about a victim who had came in about a month, a month and a half prior, and I wasn't there. And I was listening to their story, and it sounded so, so similar to the case that I was working. Like, I want to talk to this guy. Mm-hmm. They're like, no, you don't. And um, he was kind of like that. One of our youths, kind of like the CBs. It's called a yeah. Red Horse in the Air Force. And these guys are really good at what they do. And, um, I go and I bring this guy in and I have a mug shot. And, um, back then you had to have like, I think it was six pictures, you know? And, um, one of the agents before I went in there to interview him, um, was, uh, on the phone with our, um, OSI shrink, our psychologist. And I go, Hey, I want to talk to him and tell him about this case real quick before, uh, you hang up. So I talked to the psychologist. I'm like, Hey, I'm getting ready to interview this guy. And it's pretty traumatic. I guess it happened uh, a while ago, but I, I need him to try to remember some stuff. I think it's pretty traumatic for him. And he told me, he's like, Hey, well, you got to go back in that night, um, before the incident and make him start describing stuff in detail. So mm-hmm. things become more vivid to him and he remembers. Mm-hmm. I said, okay. So I took my six photo lineup and I'd already sent my six photo lineup out to the other guy who positively ID him. Um, the federal agent who I, who I deed him, we had to send it out to some other OSI agents by where he was and he ID'd him. So I had to worry about him coming back and wanting to kill the guy. And then I'm interviewing this guy and I get him going into details. Like the psychologist told me, and then I started asking him to describe the, the suspect. And as he's got his eyes closed, <clears throat> and he's got his arms crossed. I slipped the picture of the six photo lineup in front of him. And he doesn't know it's there and he opens up his eyes and he falls out of his chair. And I'm like, what's wrong, man? He goes, I just saw him. So I go, Oh man. Yeah. So, so I said, okay, if this guy did this, you know, within a couple months, how many times has he done this before? Yeah. Right. Dude, we put some feelers out there 
and we went to the different places that he was stationed, we came back with 23 victims. Oh my gosh. Yeah. He had MO. He was like a repeat, you know, same. And everyone yeah. talked to man, it was the same MO is same MO every time. Damn. Yeah. That's absolutely crazy. If one thing watching uh, Law and Order SVU has taught me is the MO is always the same. <laughs> yeah, people don't change, man. You see, so you got this guy. <laughs> yeah, it freaks nice. that because a lot of these guys, man, were like the same skin tone and build and, as me. Oh, he had like um, a type. He had his type. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, it was That's weird. absolutely crazy. Well, hopefully, like you said before telling the story, this guy's still locked up away. He's uh, about 55 years, man. So 55, yeah. 55 yeah. year. Oh, man. Well, hopefully somebody's doing it to him in there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe he likes it. I don't know, man. I don't know. That, that dude's definitely a top. I mean, he's not a bottom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is definitely not a bottom if he's a top. Right. right. Um, Terms I didn't know until I did that investigation, by the way. Exactly. Yeah, my fiance <laughs> loves... Uh, drag shows so unfortunately i know all these terms now yeah. uh, guilty by association Jeez. but <laughs> but anyways you know your book one final question for you because you know this has been an amazing episode and thanks again for being here jack thank but you jack. your book uh you know you talk about your navy seal experience your osi and thank you for sharing your you know your stories with us but there was one theme that seemed extremely evident and i think it's like the main theme of the book um, whether you intended to or not, this is what we got. Um, and that's absolutely camaraderie. And you've mentioned it in this podcast about how that's what you missed. But, you know, me and Izzy being former military as well, we talk about camaraderie a lot. Um, but, you know, before you go, we just wanted to ask, like, what's your take on it and what camaraderie means to you? Yeah. So um, it's it's when you're going to do something with people that you trust that you know that if um, you go down, they got you. And they can trust you that they know you have them. Um, and I'll tell you, there's uh, guys, you know, teammates I worked with that know stuff about me that nobody in the world ever will, you know. So um, it's hard It's hard to build. It's hard to build. But I think because of units like we belong to, guys, um, you know, when you, when you um, bleed and sweat together and you accomplish things together, even when it sucks, when you come back, you still look at each other and that's who you lean on. And when it's great, you look at each other and you buy each other drinks, you know, it's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a certain kind of bond that with that comes with a certain personality, a combination of the personalities and the circumstances that you go through together. It yeah. creates a certain type of bond that you cannot duplicate. You can't replicate anywhere else. No, uh uh-uh. Nope. And that's, yeah, that's, that's the biggest thing that I would miss is, uh, is all that, but you know, you got some good memories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great memories. And you did some good, man. You did some real, you did some real good. Like if only, if only Devery Lane was the only thing, you know, like if that, but obviously you got a lot of great examples in the book, but, uh, you did some good, man. You did some good out there. <laughs> Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good though. Yeah, yeah, I can, man. <laughs> Absolutely. So now, you know, now you're teaching JRTC in out in North Carolina. Yep. You, uh, what kind of fulfillment does that bring you? Because I know, like, doing the jobs, like you said, doing the jobs we've mm-hmm. had, we've had the camaraderie. We've mm-hmm. got a lot of fulfillment out of that. Do you, uh, <laughs> this, do you get the same camaraderie, or I mean, excuse me, do you get the same fulfillment out of teaching now than you do actually doing the job? Uh, so I'll tell you this. It was, um, more gratifying than I thought it would be. I mean, especially uh, for the type of school that I'm at. Um, I had opportunities to go to schools in more affluent areas, but um, me, I work with a, um, an, an, E9, an E9, right? And um, we spend more time with each other than we do with our wives. I mean, <laughs> our desk right next to each other. So if we don't like each other, it ain't going to work, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and um, we've been doing this for uh, uh, quite a few years now. Um, and you get these kids in here that home life isn't good. Yeah. Have two nickels to rub together. Um, they're in trouble all the time. Um, but in the end you go off and you see them accomplish something huge. Um, and they got a path 
and, and, and they are somebody and they're contributing to society and they're proud of what they're doing. Um, that's pretty gratifying. Yeah. That's awesome, man. That's cool. That's absolutely. It's like, uh, you're like living a movie. What is it? Uh, it's like coach Carter. <laughs> in real life. Yeah. You know, that's funny. You should say that the guy that I worked in here before me he used to show that video to the kids. Ah, it's good, <laughs> man. It's, it's true. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing about pop culture. Sometimes, you know, when we can connect with it, it sends a really good message. It's just yeah. like when I used to teach my guys break contact and I'd show them the bank exiting break contact scene from heat. Oh yeah. It's yeah. so good. <laughs> yeah. That tripped me out when those guys were making those calls and moving like they were doing. I'm like, what the hell? Oh yeah. They had really but, good military advisor. But in that bank scene, the uh, black security guard that's um, shot. Yeah. If you ought to remember that. Yeah. He was actually one of my instructors when I went through buds. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah. There you go. The Hollywood seal, huh? One yeah. Of them? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Well, yeah. Jack, Thank you so much for your time, your stories. Uh, you know, me and Izzy, I feel like we've been looking at each other every now and then. We, we both are on the edge of our seats when your when your um, picture is glowing because obviously we can't show your face. But thank right. you again for being here. Is there any last minute things you want to mention? Uh, Insurgent Hunter, your new book coming out. Cameron, Cameron, hold on, hold on, uh, hold on. We got a game here, man. Oh, we have a game. We oh, got a game. Man. Oh. I didn't oh, see it. I thought I thought we were strictly business on this one. All right. Well, uh, well, let me tell you, Jack. We we always do a game at the end of every episode, and we have mm -hmm. a game we'd like to play for you. It's gonna be it's, it'll be simple, man. It'll be a lot of fun, I think. But okay. um, it's called this quiz will make you I rack your brain. <laughs> okay. Oh, man, we can blame Chris, Chris. for that uh, horrible. <laughs> uh, blame Chris for that name. Uh, I'm gonna ask you about a song, movie, or a show. And all you have to do is tell me if it came out before or after we invaded Iraq in 2003. So it's 50, 50. Okay. It's just boring. Oh, man. before or after, before or after your two choices. So the warm up question, this is your example, the matrix before or after we invaded Iraq. Before, before it's correct. That came in 1999 matrix came out. Okay. Uh, remember I was a Bonus senior points in high being school. Guess the year. Yeah. <laughs> you, <can> you <laughs> I only guessed that because I think the guys were watching it on video when I got there. There you go. There you yeah. go. Four <laughs> memories. Use them. All right. Good. So you got you got the idea, man. So this first one, question number one is The Wire. The first season of The Wire. When did it come out? Before or after we invaded Iraq? Oh, that's a close one, man, because they were watching that like daily when I got there. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. So it was already on video. And I was there in 2007. That's going to be tight. I'm going to say before. That is correct. It came out. The first season came oh. out in 2002. 2002. Wow. That is close. <laughs> that <laughs> is so close. The year before. Okay, next one. Uh, the album Chop Suey by System of a Down, before or after? Mm. All right. Those are the guys that had that crazy video in the desert, right? Yeah, the yeah. Armenian boys. Yep. Yep. Wake up. This is what I'm going to make up. I'm just going to say um, after, just because the other one was before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, not quite. System of yeah. Down, Chop Suey came out in 2001. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's all right. Oh, That's all right. We got our next one coming up. Shooter, the movie starring Mark Wahlberg, mm -hmm. or Marine Sniper. Did it come out before or after? I'll say before. Oh, not quite. Came out in 2007. Shooter came out in oh 2007. Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah. yeah dude, I can I remember know. there's a certain set of movies between 2005 and 2009 that I will always remember because that yeah. was, I was like, oh, I was in North Carolina during that time. I was out in yeah. Fort Lewis at the time. Um, yeah. so, so they based that off of Gunny Hascock. Did they? Did they? Oh, I think his character was, yeah, because he was like, uh, what Super was his sniper name? man. Yeah, he was like a Marine Corps sniper. Yeah, yeah and yeah. they show, too, with uh, Brian Phillippe for a little while. It's kind of, it's the same premise, basically. But, uh, all right, next question. Gold Digger album by Kanye West, or the, the song <laughs> Gold Digger by Kanye West. Did it come out before or after? I have no idea, man. I'm not a... <laughs> <laughs> I got... I got a buddy that says there's something about every guy that's ever dated a Kardashian. And they, 
go yeah, into it's a the curse out of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the Kardashian curse. You either cut, you yeah. either become a woman or you get hooked on drugs. <laughs> you go insane. That happens, yeah. So uh, before. Oh, not quite. After it came Damn. out in 2005. 2005. Oh, so not the best guess. Oh, yeah. It's okay. <laughs> That's okay. We got two more. Here we go. The first season of Breaking Bad. Jesus. I just saw that about two years ago. Mm. Well, that's good. It's one of the best shows on television when it was on. What year did you say that came out? Well, you got to guess. Did it before or after? <laughs> I see. He's trying to do some good old police work. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, God, none, none of them were saying before, so I'm going to try before again. Oh, no. Oh, it came out <laughs> after. Try, a little word of advice <laughs> here, Jack. If you try <laughs> to play the at, the odd game where you're like, oh, well, he hasn't done this. Chris. That's the same way I just took my promotion test, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if, just, if you try to play the odds with Chris's games, you will fail because I do it all the time. And he, that, yeah. It's not working. It's not it's working. Not working. <laughs> yeah, break, first season of Breaking Bad came out in 2008. 2008. Wow. Okay. Um, okay. Next one. The last one here for you. Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, before or after. Jeez. Good gravy. That's a close one. Yeah. Mm. That is, <laughs> that is a close one. That's the one with that, that little bald guy on it with a couple wisps of hair. That's real gray, right? Yeah. Shmigo. Yeah. 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 That's where we mm. first see uh, Gollum. I thought you were thinking, talking about King Theoden because he was when he was yeah. like under control of Grime of Worm Tongue, he was all like gray and grayed out, you know. So my daughter's a little freaked out by that little gray thing. So I want to say by the time she was able to, I'll say after. Uh, well, I'm sorry, my friend. 2002. 2002. 2002. Wow. The first one came out in 2001. Yeah. Was like wow. One year after. Yeah. yeah. One right after the other. I only know that because I'm autistically hooked on Lord of the Rings. Yeah. It's his favorite mm -hmm. franchise. Yeah. Well, my, well, Jack, uh, you, you didn't do so well on the game, but <laughs> you have done a great <laughs> service a pop to your country. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so nobody's perfect, but uh, we we uh, we appreciate you. All this other services that you have provided <laughs> to your nation. <laughs> <laughs> about as good as that as i am at korean and spanish there you go <laughs> yeah. that's okay right. man well if you did well we can't give you anything anyway so in this case it does not pay to be a winner yeah it just is a lot right of fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. well jack thank you so much for joining us uh the book is insurgent hunter is that right correct yep and uh oh. by the time you're listening to this folks it'll be available everywhere so please go out and check it out. It's a really, really amazing story. Um, it reads kind of like a spy espionage, like thriller. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's all there. So, uh, Jack, is there any place uh, people can get a hold of you? Anything you want to like plug or talk about before we sign off? Uh no. If if you want to know more about uh, the book or the writing of it, um, you can go to uh, uh, Stephen Templin's social media. Stephen Templin. Uh, okay. Yeah, just spelt just like it sounds, common spelling. Yep. Um, but uh, um, I actually knew him from Buds, All right. so that's how we met up. So he's he's got a lot of uh, uh, books out there, and people are familiar with his work. So perfect, right on. Right on. Well, Jack, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we wish you all the best going forward, and thank you for your service to this great nation of ours and all the work that you did. Mm, same to you guys. I appreciate it. It was a good time. I appreciate it. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Pop Culture Field Manual Podcast. All the same, make sure you check out our YouTube, our new content, The First Formation with Izzy, The Debrief with myself. Check out our Patreon if you're interested in getting some exclusive content and joining us on a monthly movie night. And as always, we will see you on next week's episode. Izzy, cue music. <laughs>